Well, mobile home parks were considered a lower class, a lower middle class or poverty. And it is true that many mobile homes are just that, if you would classify them in a manner of economics. Uh, someone's net worth who lives in a mobile park is usually not on the higher end of the economic scale in society. However, it's also true that in Florida, they do have some above average mobile home parks, especially by the beach, uh, because Florida has a weather a climate that can produce hurricanes. Uh, there are many people who have chosen uh, mobile homes as a, uh, a limit on liability. Uh, if it blows away uh, and if you need to put a new one on the lot, there's a lot more flexibility than if you had a, a normal house. However, a mobile home does not appreciate at the same rate of a regular house. A regular house is more valuable on average. It's built better on average, and it retains and appreciates in value on average. So all that being said, you know, as I'm on my journey considering if I want to buy property again, in my lifetime, I've owned property for 15 years in New Jersey. For the past four years, I've been living as a nomad. I'm in a current, I'm currently in a hotel, been here for a couple weeks. Uh, four years, I've been living out of my Jeep, traveling up and down the East Coast. And now I'm thinking that maybe uh, I would have a home base. I'm in no rush. I have no kids. I have nothing to prove. Uh, but I am sharing. And one of the requirements that I really would like is to be on the beach. Uh, or to be very, very close to the beach. To buy a single family home on the beach is very high financially speaking, and most of those homes are very big, and it's just me. I don't have a family. So a single-family home doesn't make sense. So I'm pretty pretty much limited to a condo, um, and a mobile home, or an RV lot. And so uh, in Florida, again, they do have some of these communities that even though they're in a community that is zoned for condominiums, you have your own lot. You're not connected to anyone, which I like. You're close to people, though, because mobile home, mobile home communities are very close uh, as far as the lot sizes, most of them. But you're not attached. That's the difference between a mobile home and a condo. A condo, your shared walls, shared ceiling. Uh, on a mobile home lot, there's nothing usually connected to your unit to other units. You're just very in close proximity to the next lot. So I like that. That way you don't have to worry about leaks from your neighbor or... Uh, banging on the walls or anything like that. But uh, to the major point I wanted to share in this video, as I've been looking at these mobile home communities, one thing I noticed, the nicer ones, uh, position better, tend to have a more, um, not just a, tend to have a stuffier environment. What does that mean? The people tend to think highly of themselves, like, or tend to think that they're in this upper class and they're a little snotty. Um, and it's so weird, man, because it's like, you know, to ever be in a, a mobile home community that there's nothing to look down on it, but certainly you're not looking down on someone else. And that's kind of like the feel. In some of these uppity mobile home communities, it's like people kind of think they're better than other people. And if, even if they don't, there's a little bit of snottiness in the air. And certainly you don't want to go the other end of the spectrum where, uh, you know, you're buying in a mobile home community that, you know, it's just reckless. It's, it's, it's chaos. There's no pride in ownership. It's uh, just a rundown, beat up park, you know. So obviously, like everything, you always want to find balance, you know. And I have found a, a few mobile homes that, a, mo a few mobile home communities where the people are very nice. It's a very great energy. Uh... Uh, but it's it's average as far as the location, the amenities, and the way it looks. The above average looking ones, they're still somewhat affordable because you can probably get one for under one hundred and fifty thousand. But they're the people are a little snotty, and you say to yourself, "Do you want to live by these people?" Now, no matter what community you buy in, you're going to have, um, you know, one to ten percent of the community that 
is a little negative, okay? So if you had a community of 400 people, 40 people are going to be a little negative. If you had a community of 100 people, 10 people will be negative. It's just the way life is, human nature is, and you'll realize that as you go on your journey. But the message in this video is just to expand a little bit on the mobile home communities, um, my journey, and the fact that, you know, in one sense, I said to myself, again, I'm a single person. I stay to myself. I pretty much stayed to myself the entire 15 years. I lived in a condominium community in New Jersey, and that condominium community was kind of like, uh, you know, it was a little bit upper middle class, but... Um, but the people were overall good, but, you know, there certainly were a few people, maybe that, especially initially, that were a little bit snide. But overall, I would say the people were good. And my experience was good, but I mainly stayed to myself. And I say now, I guess it's the same thing. I think as when I first moved in, in my community in New Jersey, I was like one of the youngest people in the community. I was like 22. And the community was kind of like, you know, a little stuffy. And I'm sure they looked at me strange. So I guess it would be the same thing now. Because you have to remember, too, if I buy in a mobile home community by the beach, most of these people are retirees, uh, you know, and they're older. So it would be very similar to what happened to me when I was in my 20s. I would be buying in a community, probably one of the youngest people without a family. And I would probably be looked at a little strange until, like, everything. You prove yourself. You prove your overall positive person. You're not going to you know, cause problems. So just like being on the job, you know, when you first start, you kind of like, you just prove yourself by showing up, staying out of trouble and, and, you know, doing your, th doing your job, doing your work. So I would say that that's kind of what I have to remember, you know, because certainly I don't want to X out some communities because they feel a little stuffy. And what I mean by that too, is you go to the community and you walk around and no one waves versus some other communities, people wave and they're a little more friendly. I mean, that matters, you know, uh, you want to feel welcome in your own community a little bit, but you also you also want to buy where you're inspired. Uh, and I just want to expose that there is a little bit of arrogance, you know, for some of these mobile home communities. I'm I'm surprising uh, that I'm not I don't know if I'm surprised that I found that out, but I at least want to share with you that uh, no matter what community you have, there is an energy. Uh, the people make up the culture, the vibe, the mindset, and you can add to that. You know, when you go into community, don't forget you're not just subject to the people. You are part of the people. You know, if you're in a country, you're not just, uh, you're part of the culture. You, uh, you make it up. You add value. You could be part of the solution, not just part of the problem. Many people forget that. And so it's same thing at your job. You know, if you don't like something, you could be part of the solution, not just point out the problem, you know. And so, but obviously that means you have to get involved. You have to spend a little time and effort. And this is part of most people I think are lazy. They don't want to get involved. And I understand I try to mind my business unless I really need to get involved. But certainly there's times in my life where I do get involved. So hopefully me talking this out with you and sharing on this topic has helped you a little bit. If it did, click the thumbs up. Click the blue join button if you'd like to support the channel. Thank you to all my members. Check out my playlist. And remember, you're in no rush. Why? Your life. <laughs> Other people may want to rush you, but especially if you're single with no kids, uh, they can they can keep asking you to make a decision or they can keep thinking whatever they want. But your life, it's your time, your way. Uh, and that's the greatest point. That's the greatest part about being an adult. You know, for me, I always wanted to be an adult even when I was young, because I wanted to be able to do things the way I want to do them. I don't want to be told how to do them. And so there are negatives of being older. And the older I get, the more I realize that. But don't forget the positives. You're an adult, and you don't have to be peer pressured. Uh, you don't have to let people uh, make you prove something to them. You don't have to do anything. You just do you. And if you're not bothering them, and they're bothering you, uh, they're abusive. They're trolls. Uh, they're negative. Uh, and their life will reflect that. And, um, you know, Tell them to keep watching, okay? And uh, thank you for watching. Peace.